Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody. Uh, we were looking at sound propagation through uh, regions of uniform or uh, non-uniform temperature. Of course, we know that when you have constant temperature, you have solution, let us say for a right running wave of the form f of t minus x over c. But if you uh, see, we saw that uh, we our pressure when there is non-uniform temperature, we have non-uniform speed of sound. So, you have f of t minus integral dx over c and it is scaled by a power half and t power one fourth and similarly velocity was going as t power one fourth in the numerator, but a power half still in the denominator times f of t minus integral dx over c. We started with some kind of uh, heuristic arguments and assumptions, but later on we derived for some uh, special temperature profiles that uh, the pressure uh, can indeed be expressed in this form and the velocity was also in a similar form, but there were extra terms that is where we were and, uh, and the characteristic t minus x over c is uh, now replaced by t minus integral d psi over c and other one was t plus integral d psi over c. Now, uh, I stopped last class with some questions. Uh, what the first question was what is the relationship between pressure and density fluctuations. We worked it out and the answer was that. Uh, p prime is not exactly rho prime times c squared, but there is a uh, correction term right. We worked out did that last time right. Okay. The second question was why am I solving only two equations uh, that is here I started with momentum and energy. Even if we look at the my time domain solution I was starting with momentum and energy. Uh, we actually have three equations um, continuity momentum and energy. So, why are we solving just two? What happened to the third one actually? Rajesh, why do not we use continuity momentum and energy and solve them together, which should be the case. I either use continuity and momentum or momentum and energy, but Vikram, yes sir. Okay. The answer is that uh, uh, the continuity equation gets decoupled from the momentum and energy equations uh, for um, Mach number 0 <coughs> or Mach number 10 to 0. And if you had uh, higher flows like if you have mean velocity terms, then uh, if you have very small mean velocity, you can still have u bar appearing, but you can still decouple the terms. But, uh, but for moderate u bars, uh, uh, you will we, you will not be able to decouple the terms, and you will have to keep uh, all three equations together. But when it gets decoupled, you can solve either momentum and energy or continuity and momentum, and then solve the third one, uh, plug it into the other equation, and get the density. So in this case, we use momentum and energy equation, solve for p prime and u prime, then plug this in into the continuity equation, and you can actually get the density fluctuation. So, that comes out of it. You do not have to solve them in a coupled manner, but if you had higher velocities, you will have to solve them in a coupled manner. Is that clear? So, we um, go back to this equation. Uh, now, I am talking about rho, rho prime. Rho prime can be solved by, um, if you look at the continuity <coughs> equation, So, this is the uh, continuity equation. So, when we solve the wave equation, we can get u prime, right? 
I mean you get p prime from there you can get u prime. So, once you know u prime and if you know the mean density and density gradient then we can plug it into this and get the uh, uh, and get the density or in the harmonic domain it would be i omega rho hat plus So, if you know this and this then you can solve for this ok, it's clear. So, uh, uh, back to the equations. So, any other questions? Feel free to ask. <coughs> Rajesh, is something still bothering you? What does it? Because there I said uh, uh, I wanted to uh, only concentrate on the effect of attenuation, so I said A equal to B that was imposed in there, that was inbuilt in there. <coughs> ah. uh, earlier problems we were having either closed and both ends yeah. or open and both ends. Yeah. How would the sound is generated inside? You know, so that and was uh, mentioned in the first class, if you remember. We I mean sound has to be generated somehow, <coughs> but we are now solving for only the propagation. So, when we are solving for that complex eigenvalue and then we talked about attenuation and all that, we assumed that sound was somehow there and how it is decaying or how it is growing, but uh, it is simply because uh, <coughs> this is much easier to do than to calculate for the sound generation which is still an open problem uh, with lot of controversies. So, propagation is kind of well worked out over the centuries, <coughs> but we will deal with how sound is created after a few classes, but uh, so for that uh, you have to actually separate the unsteady base flow from the acoustic equations and then the unsteady base flow actually drives the acoustic equation and the acoustic equation gets coupled to the unsteady base flow. So, it is like a feedback kind of thing. Mm. Gender admittance condition. Can you speak loudly so that the camera will also record? Yeah, for the gender admittance condition. Yeah. Uh, one side we apply admittance, the other side. Yeah. Both sides we apply admittance condition. Yeah, it? I, I assume that or, or the <coughs> other side was closed because I wanted to have a simple thing which I can derive in two lines. So if I can actually uh, have admittance on both sides, <coughs> and uh, that's why in in the uh, <coughs> If I look at the acoustic energy corollary, I have um, sorry, um, what are the factors? 2 rho bar c squared plus half rho bar u prime square, and then I time average plus uh, this is volume integral plus control surface. So, in principle it is over all boundaries. So, even if you one dimensionalize the problem uh, still there are two boundaries on left and right plus so if I have a duct you can have uh, intensity go out this way or that way or you can actually have these walls vibrate and take out the energy also which also happen in reality. So, all that has to be accounted for. So, I wanted a simple very simple tractable problem whose answer I can write in two lines to show the connection, but in reality you can solve these complex problems and you can actually solve them <coughs> there is no problem and um, the uh, that is why the final result I wrote uh, <coughs> don't know if it's there here. This is somewhat general. 
as long as you do not have mean flow once you have mean flow and then uh, even a constant mean flow will make this expression a mass and modified I mean a non uniform mean flow which is what really is there makes it a bigger mess and then there are a lot of controversies. But in the simplest case when there is no mean flow, but there are a lot of surfaces yeah, this should be the general result. Minus omega imaginary. Okay. So this this can be contributing from any side. I mean, and it need not be a one-dimensional problem. I mean, you can have energy loss here, or you can have a little hole here, or you can have um, some sponge kind of thing here, or various possibilities exist. All it says is uh, the uh, acoustic energy will grow or decay that depends on how much of it is coming in minus how much of it is lost. So, that is so that accounts for any, any any possibility of coming in from anywhere ok clear anything else yeah nice to see you smile after a long time ok. <coughs> so, back to harmonic solutions and we had the momentum and energy equation and we just now discussed why it is enough to deal with only two of them. <coughs> and uh, because the third one can be used to derive density fluctuations and you do not have to solve them in a couple manner and then we get this uh, nice little wave equation in the harmonic domain and this is quite consistent with whatever we had derived earlier as the Helmholtz equation. So, if you look at the middle term you have a you have a 1 over t bar d t bar over d x which is actually 0 when there is no temperature gradient and the last term is omega squared over gamma r t bar gamma r t bar is nothing but square of the speed of sound. So, omega squared over c squared is k squared which is a constant uh, for the case of constant temperature. So, that is why we had d squared p over d x squared plus k squared p equal to 0. Now, this in general uh, I do not know how to solve it. So, you have to use some trick and if you have a general solution fantastic uh, write about it and you can immediately uh, uh, get a new result. So, uh, I did a little trick out of the blue. Uh, so, uh, you can do any tricks and the idea is to get um, the differential equation transformed into some other equation whose solution is known ok that is the idea. You know something and you have an unknown thing and is there some way this unknown thing can be converted to a known thing and then you can look at the tables or, or, of integrals and write down the answer. Of course, you can also if this equation has not been solved and then you can solve it with a new technique like if it is a ordinary differential equation how do you solve it in general. Huh? No, that is to um, separate if there is some uh, other driving function and all that, but <coughs> just a basic homogeneous part how do you get it. Ah, you use the Frobenius expansion. What I did was, uh, so if you have a differential equation which is not solved, you look at the books and it is not solved at all and there is no transformation existing to compare it to the, uh, to convert it into a existing solution. What you can do is you can do a series solution and get a new solution and then of course, you have to study the properties of this new solution and uh, uh, beat the hell out of it and, and then tabulate it, draw curves and all that and then you can call it your own function. You can be Dirac function or Vishnu's function or Anviksha function or Akshay function whatever and then uh, uh, you can get your own name uh, of, of famous and, and so on. Uh, I resorted to the easy thing I did not try for a Sujit function, but I tried to uh, piggyback on somebody whose solution already exists. So, after the blue I did this transformation the trick was uh, that uh, I tried to solve this equation uh, quite hard did not get anywhere. So, I abandoned this problem and wrote a numerical solution for it and it is quite simple and we will do that as a homework uh, problem or assignment for this. <coughs> uh, it is quite trivial to uh, solve these two things. Uh, these are two ODEs and how do you solve OD numerically? This you must be knowing. Ah, so, what is the simplest uh, ODE? 
Runge Kutta, yeah, we can use a Runge Kutta second order or fourth order and get a uh, get a solution peacefully. But uh, I will, uh, I want to do some analytical things so that we can get uh, some properties coming out very uh, nicely and, and, and so on. <coughs> but we will do this Runge Kutta as <coughs> um, some kind of uh, solution uh, uh, which will work out for assignment or something like that. So, what I thought was that normally we say x as a function of temperature, pressure as a function of temperature, uh, velocity as a function of temperature. So, uh, <coughs> I got in an inspired moment I thought that we will think about, uh, uh, no sorry we think of temperature as a function of x, pressure as a function of x, velocity as a function of x. In an inspired moment I thought that x is a function of temperature, uh, pressure is a function of temperature, velocity is a function of temperature and then suddenly I solved the problem uh, and in hindsight, uh, so I did not do all this big writing I just wrote down the answer <coughs> uh, directly. But uh, so what uh, this is the general way of doing it. So if you rewrite uh, everything as a uh, function of temperature uh, and write the different equation in terms of temperature. No one said that temperature is a function of s x. I could also think of distance as a function of temperature. No one ever said uh, I mean it is not written in any Vedas or Bible that temperature function of x not the other way. So, when I wrote this somehow it worked. So, whatever works works in getting solution right. So, I, I got this solution and uh, then you plug in various different temperature profiles and for a lot of temperature profiles you can get the solution uh, peacefully with this approach. So, we will look at the simplest temperature profile is the linear temperature profile. So, we say T bar equal to T naught plus uh, m x. So, m is a constant and T naught is another constant and x is this distance. <coughs> so, I rewrote the equation uh, uh, in this form. So, we are uh, replacing x by T. Now, this will work if you have a monotonic function, but if you say that the, your temperature goes up and falls down then you will have to do it in two segments. Uh, but if it is wiggling all over the place then I think it is not possible to do this, but usually it is a monotonic function uh, or it decreasing or increasing. Uh, uh, so, this uh, differential equation has a solution which is uh, C 1 j naught omega over a t bar plus C 2 y naught omega over a square root of t. Now, I presume you know what is j naught and y naught. Huh? Okay. How many of you know j naught y naught raise your hands. Besser. Besser. Everybody know everything about Besser. Only Rajesh knows. Okay. So if you have any doubt, you can ask Rajesh. What is J naught and why not Rajesh? Just you are, I know you are expert in this. So give some commentary on it. Speak loudly. The Bessel's function for the first order. Ah. J zero is. Z zero. J zero. Yes. And Y zero is. Neumann. Neumann. Function. Why do you use this one? Yeah. Where do you see this kind of one? Cylindrical. Cylindrical one. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So I guess I have to give a supplementary class on differential equation is that what it comes down to huh? sorry you know about Bessel function okay you know about. everybody knows Bessel function everybody is shaking their heads in several different how many do not know about Bessel function just only two no five six seven okay so along with my Frobenius thing I will have to give about Bessel so. Okay, so uh, you have uh, a solution for pressure and velocity. Now, of course, this solution is useful only if you know what is Bessel function. So at the moment, I'll give a uh, two-minute lecture on Bessel function, and uh, and then we'll have an elaborate lecture later. Okay, fair enough. But you can write it down. At least you feel very happy that uh, cool. You can tell your classmates I wrote Bessel function in my notebook. So J is called Bessel, and Y is called Neumann, and they were the names of people. And you can try to work out these transformations at home. Uh, I have emailed the paper which has the solutions, uh, and um, you can see. It. So, uh, <coughs> my one minute introduction about what is a Bessel equation. Uh, this is the Bessel equation. Um, it's a very simple equation. I am sure you are familiar with d squared y dx squared plus y equal to 0. What does that give? Mm. 
like sin and cos and so on. Yeah. So, we have an extra middle term and the y term is modified by 1 minus n squared over x squared. Okay. So, the solutions are Bessel and n can be a integer or a non integer it can be a complex and so on, but when n is an integer you have one kind of solution when o n is not an integer we will have another kind of solution. So, let us for the time being uh, say that we worry about only when n is an integer So, these kind of equations are quite common when you deal with uh, cylindrical coordinates, spherical coordinate, coordinates and so on uh, and that they, these uh, uh, solutions Bessel function they are also called cylinder functions or spherical functions and, and, and so on. Uh, the, and when, if you have studied heat conduction in a, a circular rod or, or, or a sphere or something you would uh, see these functions, I do not know if you have done heat transfer they will teach all these things. <coughs> so, this is <coughs> Uh, the red line here is uh, J naught and uh, green is J 1 and blue is J 2. So, the important thing is uh, J naught starts with 1 all other J's start with 0 and the important thing to notice is that there is some kind of a envelope where the maximas are decaying. And uh, so that is the first thing. So, if you had uh, sin x, it is a periodic function, and, and, and between each of the roots of sin x, or the technical name mathematician uses called zeros. <coughs> so, between each 0, 0 means where sin x or cos x, where they actually touch 0, the distance between the zeros is the same. So, sin when is sin x 0? It is at 0 and 180 degree, 360 degree, 270 degree. So, they say the zeros are equidistant or something like that. <coughs> Whereas, Bessel's it would not be in fact, you can see that as you uh, go uh, in, in terms of increasing x the roots will come closer and, and, and so on. So, the two features <coughs> <coughs> one is this uh, maximas are uh, kind of not constant they are decaying and the uh, distance between the roots are not constant. So, uh, very easy now world cup is going on you can look at this Hawkeye and when somebody tries to uh, hit a lofted ball, the ball would uh, so if I am batting here and then uh, and then and, 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 and so on then. Uh, uh, of course, if uh, there is a fielder here you would be out, but if some nobody catches it bounces like this. Of course, in JE it will all it's all sine waves and all that, but in reality it is this. And uh, you can see that uh, you have like a decay pattern of the peaks, and then the uh, roots are or the zeros are non equidistant. And there is a class of curves which uh, are used to fit this kind of stuff, and they are the Bessel function. The, the solution emerges naturally, and you can imagine that in a uh, cylindrical geometry, for example, uh, you are spreading out uh, stuff, right. So, that way your amplitude of whatever uh, thing is occurring it, it can it will keep coming down as you go away right that is something intuitively you can imagine. So, here the temperature does the same kind of spreading out that that is what we saw there right uh, it gives kind of scaling that is why we get the Bessel. So, this is Bessel and uh, I there is a good section in Wikipedia on Bessel function. So, that is probably the easiest thing to do and uh, this is Neumann. So, <coughs> The Neumann function all of them uh, start from minus infinity all of them. So, if you have uh, x equal to 0 in your domain you can happily throw away the Neumann function because you if you want your solution to be bounded then this should not exist if x equal to 0 is a domain, but in our solution we do not have t equal to 0 t is a variable. So, you have to keep it, but in a usual uh, conduction problem in a uh, uh, cylindrical road or something this term will go to 0, but if you are having an annulus then you will have to keep it. Uh, so, again you see the exponential uh, dk or, or sorry a dk kind of thing and then there is also this periodicity it is going up and down, but uh, crossing zeros many times, but the zeros are not equidistant and uh, so this is the uh, Neumann function. Uh, so, I will give some supplementary lectures on what this is, uh, but I will not teach um, enough to 
compensate for a math class, but just to give a more courage to go and read a book or something like that. I, I will get to that stage. But at the moment, you can believe that <coughs> y naught looks like this red curve here and j naught looks like this red curve here. Okay, that is fair enough. <coughs> so, if you were to plot the acoustic pressure amplitude distance for some closed closed pipe or something, um, this is what you would get. I mean, so you can see we saw that uh, here there is a decreasing temperature profile. So, when pressure uh, when the temperature mean temperature decreases, what should the pressure do? It should go up because there is a 1 over t power 1 fourth in the denominator, right. So, you can see that the uh, oh, as the uh, uh, as we go from left to right, temperature is decreasing, but the pressure amplitudes are going up. At each of the maximas have a uh, um, uh, different amplitudes and progressively increasing. And you can also see that the uh, wavelength is changing uh, because your uh, temperature is coming down. So if you are cooling down, the wavelength also comes down. Okay. So this is the way the acoustic pressure amplitude is. Yes, Vishnu. We'll pause for a minute for you to look at it. We are uh, whole course is about linear acoustics. So, if you have non-linear acoustics, we do not have this differential equation. We'll have a, we will have a wave equation with terms like uh, dp by dx squared and so on. Yeah, this is for a linear wave. Sorry, I, I thought you were talking about linear variation of pressure, <coughs> linear variation of T. And for so you don't have a general solution, so you can get solutions for linear or exponential or polynomial and and so on. Uh, <coughs> if you have to have any general arbitrary profile with, if you give me a table of numerical values of temperature with x, <coughs> and I don't have a functional form, then I will have to do numerical integration. But this. Uh, linear variation in temperature it is nice to get a, a j naught and y naught because I mean immediately I know how the solution what are the features I should look like. So, when you are having the <coughs> pressure amplitude go up, that does not necessarily mean that acoustic intensity is created, it is just the uh, this kind of uh, uh, spreading by the temperature. Uh, <coughs> so, here for example, if you look at the velocity, it is going the other way, the peaks are coming down and we saw that the velocity scales like uh, t power plus one fourth, right. So, as temperature is decreasing, velocity will also decrease, which is what uh, we are seeing and again the uh, uh, the distance between the roots are non uh, they are not uh, they are not same. So, these are the two characteristics and the Bessel function beautifully captures these things. I must emphasize that just because the pressure amplitude is between two peaks is one is higher than the other does not mean energy is created velocity may be the other way. So, uh, I mean when you have when you deal with a non uniform media you have to uh, be careful in studying all this. Uh, the te profile was uh, T naught plus m x or something like that. So, m is the temperature gradient d t bar over d x. Yeah, I, I have drawn for two temperature profiles. Very good. Okay. So I, we can do experiments. So uh, I did some experiment. That's why I started my career with this non-uniform temperature, and, and then I wanted to understand the results and uh, therefore, I did lot of theoretical analysis to understand the results and I <coughs> told you in those days uh, 25 years back or more, it was really hard to do these experiments with there was no lab view, there was no modern computer, there was this data acquisition program in a uh, 
paper tape which had holes punched in it and, and the, you have to wound it on a spool and, and, and so on. It was really ridiculously difficult and so uh, it was so difficult to do an experiment which will now be trivially simple. <coughs> so to understand, uh, you have to understand the subject to maximize your chance of getting some reasonable success. I think uh, uh, that is the reason why I even went to the, I looked there was no solution so I derived a solution myself to understand the problem and I think it was really worth it. So if you, here I was trying to look at the admittance of a mixing chamber here. So if you are having a non-uniform uh, uh, temperature uh, uh, experiment, you do have to put thermocouples here. For example, we, I had mounted a lot of thermocouples uh, all over the place. In fact, where the temperature is falling rapidly, I had many thermocouples uh, and then uh, you need to traverse the microphone to get the acoustic field. And I had only one microphone with me, actually two microphones, one to uh, one at the left end as a reference to get the face and another one here and you uh, uh, traverse. But if you are having 15 microphones, you can mount them all and get a reading in a snap. And if you are looking at a admittance measurement in a rocket, then there is no possibility but to have some 15 microphones because the experiment will be over in a second or so. So I have mailed this slides to you. Uh, I hope you got it. If you did not get it, I got your email address wrongly because a few of them bounced. So just in case any of you did not get this uh, email with the slides, then give me your email address. <coughs> so you can, uh, once you have the solution, you can um, plot, the solu uh, uh, plot the solution. But not just that, if you, if you have the solution, um, you can actually recover the admittance and so on. So uh, by curve fitting or a fancy name is multi microphone technique. So that is what I have done here. I just showed some typical result to do this. <coughs> and you can get uh, uh, profiles, uh, solutions for other temperature profiles. For example, many times your uh, temperature may drop very rapidly um, near the flame and then might steady off. For example, <coughs> many times you can have. temperature profiles of this form. So exponential may be a better function to fit them. <coughs> so here I managed to get a solution with uh, uh, exponential temperature for profile again in terms of Bessel functions and uh, do not worry I will not ask you to derive this in the examination and so on. Uh, but I uh, wanted to show the solution to those who are interested because then it is really uh, nice to be able to, uh, you can appreciate uh, the solution and the physics behind it very much. Uh, so uh, the problem in real combustors for example if you are uh, working on a solid rocket motor or something like that is that you have particulate damping temperature gradient mean flow everything together. So each thing will have a different kind of effect on it. We saw uh, what kind of effect the uh, attenuation did to the standing wave you, you know what kind of effect uh, admi uh, admittance condition does to the standing wave. Now we saw what kind of effect the uh, temperature variation is doing to a standing wave. But each of the solutions when I am studying, I am keeping everything else constant. For example, when I showed the solutions with the, uh, uh, when I showed this solution, I have kept closed um, uh, uh, quarter wave tube, closed open boundary. So that there is no energy coming in and going out, there is no damping. When I talked about the damping, I kept again a, uh, closed end that is what Rajesh was asking whether A equal to B amplitude of the left turning or right turning wave are equal at the reflection at the termination. Uh, and I did not have a uh, uh, flow or uh, uh, temperature gradient. Uh, so now uh, in reality there will be all these things mixed together. So uh, you will have to uh, uh, tread carefully on, on these things. Uh, so we will uh, as a last part look at uh, the effect of uh, particulate damping on the uh, uh, acoustic wave <coughs> which is kind of a form of the attenuated waves but we will look at it in the presence of temperature gradient. Uh, so uh, the motivation is as I mentioned in rockets you have alumina in the uh, 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 aluminum in the propellant which will burn and form alumina which is used to damp the combustion instabilities and there are a lot of other applications also. For example, if you are uh, drying slurries in a pulse combustor then the slurry will damp the acoustic wave. Uh, or if you are using 
a pulse combustor to set up I mean you have they, they do acoustic driving for increasing the heat and mass transfer process for example if you are drying milk powder you could use sound to increase the productivity because you, you can of course evaporate milk faster by increasing temperature but only thing is the uh, what to get out may be spoiled. So when in food industry you cannot increase the temperature uh, beyond some levels there is tight control. So then uh, human beings are very greedy we want more and more we have a fancy name called productivity for that. Uh, uh, so then they try to uh, disturb the flow to get productivity with acoustic oscillations or turbulence and so on. So uh, these equations were derived by Rajesh who is sitting here. So if you have any question you can ask him. Uh, so here uh, the momentum equations get uh, modified by a, by a, a little term here and uh, do not get nervous if you cannot derive the solutions because I will not ask them in the exam <coughs> this particular thing. So you have uh, a k times u prime and I think intuitively you can feel that if you have a droplet what is the drag on the droplet you must have studied this in school. Stokes drag, yeah. How does it go? Ah, six pi eta r v, right? So it's proportional to v, basically this. And the uh, Reynolds number dependence C D equal to twenty four over r e. It will work out. So uh, if the um, uh, so the sphere has a drag, which is proportional to velocity, and that's going to take out some momentum. So that's what this term is here, right? So k u prime and k can be actually expressed in terms of number of particles and this uh, drag of a sphere. And of course if, if it is a very messy thing with lots of droplets all interacting then uh, it may be harder to actually get the value of k directly from first principles but <coughs> does not matter. You can convert it into um, harmonic domain in this fashion energy equation is staying unmodified here it would get modified <coughs> if there is uh, uh, evaporation or something. In fact I think in the question papers which I sent you there was one question about damping by evaporating droplets. Uh, so you can actually get uh, solutions of this form uh, when there is particular uh, I mean the, the wave equation comes to be of this form and uh, you have to use specific temperature profiles to get a solution. So for exponential temperature profile uh, you get uh, something of this form and now you can see that the wave number is now a complex stuff and that is not very unfamiliar because when we saw the attenuation problem we saw that the wave number is getting complex there right. So do not bother writing down I have mailed you the slides and uh, <coughs> you can actually get the solution again in terms of Bessel functions uh, only thing is uh, this nu is uh, 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 so if you make this transformation and you can get this in terms of Bessel function general Bessel function only thing is this nu is actually complex and so this is in terms of the complex Bessel function. Now to look at the uh, uh, pressure distribution uh, so I still have a closed end here on the left side uh, I am still holding on to some simple things but uh, the dotted line is when there is uh, no damping but only temperature gradient. So you will see that the that goes up this is the same solution we saw earlier but when there is damping the minimas will start going up the maximas will also change as we saw in the earlier uh, derivation. So, uh, so this combination will come now so the minimas are going up the maximas are going up in a different way and uh, this is the effect and uh, to actually do the inverse problem if you are to determine the uh, admittance and the damping coefficient by given the solution if you have to do you have to actually measure the standing wave up to at least two minimas because the pattern for this is uh, the uh, uh, bot, uh, the minimas will continue to go up. If you are having energy flow from one side and no attenuation in the medium then the minima will go up evenly all minimas will go up by to the same level but if you have attenuation in the medium each minima will go differently. So you have to measure multiple wavelengths to uh, this is the velocity amplitude. <coughs> so you see that the minimas are continuing to go up, the maximas are staying constant. This is not that there is anything which says maximas will stay constant because the temperature gradient tried to uh, uh, bring it down, 
but the damping makes goes the other way. So, between those two it kind of roughly cancelled in this particular example that is all. So, you have to be careful when you uh, really uh, worry about uh, this way or that way. So, one, one should be quite uh, careful about uh, when, when the combination effects are there. I think uh, this is where I will stop with this uh, uh, effect of non-uniform media. Uh, now, what I also want to do, uh, I will stop for a moment and answer questions if there are any questions. Is there any questions? So, uh, we uh, will have a assignment, we will have two assignments. The first one is take these two solutions, take these two equations and um, solve them numerically with fourth order Runge kota and you can then compare it with uh, the uh, uh, solutions that are given by the closed form solution. So, that is the assignment one that clear and you have to um, uh, write a computer program uh, after you understand what is Runge kota technique and <coughs> and uh, you can program in any language you like you can do it uh, with MATLAB or Fortran C is a simple thing. So, it does not matter where you do whichever you like you can also do it with Mathematica uh, any, any, any way you can and do it numerically with Runge kota and uh, uh, of course, in um, MATLAB and Mathematica you do not need to uh, write a Runge kota routine it will be there. If, I think it will be nice idea if you write a Runge kota routine and uh, do it, but if you can use the inbuilt thing that is also fine as long as you learn how to use it. So, this is the assignment. So, once you do this you should plot get some results compared with, with the theoretical solution and write a nice report and give it to me. Okay. And, uh, I think maybe in um, three weeks time it can be done. I will. I don't have a calendar with me, so next day I'll tell the precise date. Okay. And uh, uh, and and once you write, uh, once you finish the solution, you should write a report and explain what you have done, why you are doing, what you are doing, and the results and so on. Okay. And if you, uh, I guess everybody knows some kind of programming. So, we should be able to do it in, in, in anything you have access to I mean you know some programming language like Fortran, C, C++, MATLAB, Mathematic anything, anything is okay. So, you use it to if you do not if, if, if you do not know MATLAB maybe it is a good idea to do it in MATLAB because then you can learn MATLAB or if you know MATLAB try to do it in Mathematica you can learn it because it is a very simple assignment. So, uh, you can use this chance to learn something else okay anything else. So, uh, the next topic is uh, this uh, multi dimensional uh, situations where you have uh, in a cylindrical tube or we have a square box and so on. I will work out some cases and uh, we will start with that, but in the exam it is only till here, but I would not ask you to solve a differential equation with tricks and so on. So, let us uh, uh, now look at wave equation in cylindrical coordinates that is the next topic. So, this is the wave equation in cylindrical coordinates I will not derive it you can 
either try to expand del squared and then write down the solution or derive it from scratch either way any way you like you can derive it and if i i just want to look at the radial variation so i will remove the i will say the problem is cylindrically symmetric so i'll remove the dependence on phi i will also say i don't want to study the dependence on z uh, uh, so we'll just look at the r part So, you have a, a cylindrical pipe and you are having solutions. So, can you write a solution f of uh, r minus c t or f of r plus c t scaled by some r dependence. Like can you get something <coughs> of the form, <coughs> if, you, if you have a spherical wave equation, you know the solution it is f of r minus c t over r or g of r plus c t over r. Can you get some such thing here? Uh, I, I would guess that you should have a solution of the form uh, f of r minus c t or r plus c t over square root of r or some other function of r, but it turns out that nobody was ever able to derive the solution. Uh, so, it, it does not work that way and the <coughs> there is a reason given here. So, 2D is nothing but uh, like 3D infinitely, in infinitely long right. So, if you think about a, a, a cylinder which is infinitely long and you think about the line source uh, <coughs> so if you are uh, looking at somewhere here and you are looking at sound coming from here. Uh, so, you can get sound coming here and of course, it is spreading out as you r is increasing, but sound from everywhere else is also keep on coming and it actually uh, will keep on coming forever. So, this is what precludes us from um, deriving a solution of the form uh, f of r plus or minus c t divided by root r. So, there is uh, of course, if you do it a uh, good chance for at least becoming fa famous uh, I do not know about Nobel Prize, but it will be uh, it is something which has eluded people <coughs> and I think there is good reason why it has eluded, but that does not mean you cannot solve it. Right? So, what is the next best thing you can do? So, we cannot get a solution in time domain. In cylindrical coordinates, you can get in time domain. This is the scaling is 1 over r for pressure and velocity. Huh? Ah, in spherical, yeah. In fact, the exam list has homework problem, I mean problems of that sort. Uh, in cylindrical, it is not possible to get. And, and so, what, what is what can you do? You have to do in harmonic domain, there is no other way. It is always elegant to have f of x plus c t x g of x minus c t that kind of solution. If you cannot get it, you cannot get it. So, then we write it in uh, uh, you have to do uh, separation of variables, you have to try to do separation of variables that also need not work, but uh, so <coughs> p equal to p of uh, r times. T of T and substitute in and you can get solutions and you can uh, uh, you can get solutions for this. So, this is what uh, you can try to do it at home and come back and tell me what is the kind of solution you get tomorrow. That is not